There's an absurd number of coconut products on the market. And if you're looking to achieve a weight loss or fat loss goal, it is really important that you know the difference between each of these because some can be really helpful and others could actually reverse your progress. So today I'm sharing 10 of the most common coconut products and which you should use versus which you should avoid. Let's dive into it. My name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition, human performance. And today's video is sponsored by Element. More on them in a bit. Okay, the first is coconut milk, specifically from a carton. This is very similar to a lot of other nut milk milks like almond milk or hemp seed milk or cashew milk. One cup has about four grams of fat in it. It also has one gram of carbs and zero grams of protein. All of that will be roughly about 40 calories per cup. Sometimes it is going to be fortified with vitamin D and B12. That's because so many people are now using it in place of just regular milk that it does need to be fortified with these really important nutrients. The way it's made is by just taking coconut flakes or coconut shreds and you just blend it with some hot water and then strain out the actual flakes itself. What you have left behind is like a coconut juice, but people call it coconut milk. It's actually very easy to make. You literally can make it in five minutes. So don't go spending money on this. I do have a video on how to make it. I'll have it linked up here if you wanna check that out. But this would be a great option to use for something like smoothies if you are on a weight loss journey. You can also put it in your coffee or if you're making chia pudding, you can use it as well. Okay, next up, we also have coconut milk, but from a can. Now this is a hugely different product. Now with coconut milk from a carton, the actual coconut meat or shreds is straight out and removed from the final product. But with coconut milk from a can, it is left in. So because of that, it's going to be a lot thicker. You're usually going to get that like almost thick buttery sensation throughout most of the can and a little bit of the coconut milk water in there. It's also going to be much higher in fat. So a one cup serving is going to have about 42 grams of fat, six grams of carbs and two grams of protein. Because it is so high in fat, I wouldn't recommend using it in place of coconut milk for smoothies. That high amount of fat will really displace the important protein needed for a body recomposition or weight loss goal. Instead, it's great to use it in recipes, like if you're making coconut curry. Sometimes coconut milk can be used in a smoothie, but you're using a lot less of it. You're not going to be using like a cup serving. In fact, I'm a huge fan of actually adding high quality fats into smoothies along with high quality protein to make sure that you're getting adequately satisfied. But a common mistake I see people make is that they add too much fat and too little protein. So they don't properly balance out the fat to protein and protein is needed to really make you feel full and satisfied. Fat is important as well, but it doesn't do as good of a job as protein. So without enough protein and too much fat in the smoothie, it can lead to easily overeating beyond the body's needs. Okay, the third is coconut water. Now I have one example here and coconut water is also very different from coconut milk. If you were to actually crack open a coconut, the coconut water would literally be the liquid that's coming out of the coconut. Coconut milk is made from the meat portion, which is that like white inner lining of the coconut. And coconut water is a lot sweeter and it has a lot more carbohydrates. It does have some electrolytes, which is why people will have coconut water. Although for the amount that you get compared to the amount of sugar that's in it, it's not really a great option if you are on a body recomposition journey. If you're an athlete and if you want to use something like coconut water because you are burning through a lot of the carbohydrates with the type of workouts that you're doing, that's one thing. But during a body recomposition journey, it's not really ideal to use coconut water for electrolytes because one cup of coconut water has 14 grams of sugar. Keep in mind, this whole container is more than one cup. So this whole container actually has 24 grams of sugar. So that's a lot of sugar. That's like two thirds the amount that's in a typical soda. So coconut water during a weight loss or body recomposition journey, probably not ideal, but electrolytes are important. So if you want a great alternative, you can check out today's sponsor, Element. Element is a really amazing electrolyte company that was created with intermittent fasting, lower carb eating, and athletes in mind. It actually contains the sodium, magnesium, and potassium to help balance out loss electrolytes all without having any sugar. So especially when you're on a body recomposition goal and you're looking to reduce your sugar intake, Element is an amazing option. And even though it's zero sugar, Element tastes incredible. It comes in a lot of different flavors. My favorite is their grapefruit salt. It is so refreshing, so delicious. Although they do have a ton of other delicious flavors as well, like their orange, citrus, and raspberry salts. They even have a chocolate option that tastes great as a hot chocolate alternative. I usually take between one to two packets of Element per day, depending on my activity level and how hot it is. I just love how I feel so much more hydrated when I'm actually getting the proper amount of electrolytes with Element. And right now, Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serve packets free with any Element order. It's a really great way to test out all eight flavors. So you can get yours at drinkelement.com forward slash autumn. It's only available through my link. So make sure to check out D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T.com forward slash autumn. The link is also in the description down below. Okay, next up we have coconut cream, which does come in a can, but it is different than just regular 
regular coconut milk in a can. Coconut cream is essentially canned coconut milk, but without the liquid portion. So it's just the actual grated meat or like flakes portion of the coconut without the water diluting it. So it is even higher in fat. Two tablespoons of coconut cream will give you about six grams of fat, which is why it is a great alternative to use as like a coffee creamer. You can use a couple tablespoons of coconut cream and throw it in coffee. And that's a great dairy free alternative if you are not using dairy. But again, it's not something that you want to just like dump entirely into a smoothie. You could use a couple tablespoons of it for a high quality source of fat, but that's where I would leave it. Okay, next up we have coconut butter, which this jar of mine has definitely seen better days. <laughs> mm. Oh, it does smell good though. Oh. So coconut butter is made from really finely blended coconut shreds. Whereas I believe coconut cream is made from the whole source of coconut meat, which is going to have some natural hydration to it. So because of that, the coconut butter is a drier product. It's actually shelf stable because of that. I love using a couple tablespoons of coconut butter in a smoothie because it also does help to sneak in a little bit of fiber as well as some satiating fat. And you always know what time of year it is based on how hard your coconut butter is. <laughs> when it's like a hot summer's day, this is a lot more liquidy when it's winter, it is very difficult to get out. You have to like use a knife to get it out. <laughs> okay, next we have coconut oil or MCT oil. Now these are separate products, but MCT oil is usually made from coconut oil. So coconut oil is similar to a lot of other oils where it's pressed from the meat portion. So kind of like avocado or olive oil, you take the meat and you press it and you get the oil out of it. So it is going to be a pure fat product. It's also very high in saturated fat, which is actually a good thing for cooking because it means that it's going to be less likely to become oxidized. In fact, there's a study showing that virgin coconut oil helped to improve oxidative stress and insulin resistance and even showed positive benefits for BDNF, which is really important for brain health. And then MCT oil can be made from a lot of different oils, but it's often extracted from coconut oil. So coconut oil is going to be just from that pressed coconut, but MCT is an additional processing. So it's a more processed food to further extract out a certain type of fat or triglycerides rather. And those specific fatty acids have been found to be more helpful at increasing satiety. There's also a lot of brain benefits associated with it too. So coconut oil, really great to cook with. And you could experiment with MCT oil. A lot of people like to use it in their keto coffee or even putting a little bit in a smoothie. Okay, next up we have coconut sugar. Now a lot of people use coconut sugar because they think it's a healthier option and it is slightly lower glycemic load than just regular cane sugar, but it's still sugar, which means that it's still sweet. It's still going to make a food more hyper palatable and make it a lot easier to overeat. So don't be fooled in thinking just because it's from a coconut that it's a healthier option. It's still sugar, which used sparingly for specific treats could be a good option, but especially for a body recomposition or a wellness goal, it's not something that should be had every single day. Okay. Next up we have coconut meat, which is that more whole food portion of the coconut. It's that white inner flesh portion of the coconut. And you can get this fresh. Like you can sometimes find it in just the fridge aisle section of a grocery store, you can find it frozen. Or of course, if you want to just like crack open a coconut, you can get it that way too. I love using frozen coconut meat in place of bananas sometimes, especially for those who are carb sensitive because it is going to be higher in fat and have a little bit of fiber in there too. So you can replace some of the banana that will have more of the sugars with the frozen or fresh coconut meat. And it'll help to make the smoothie nice and thick the way a banana would, but without the extra sugars, which is a good option if you are carb sensitive. Next up, we have coconut flour. Now coconut flour is made from dried coconut meat. It is going to be much more blood sugar stabilizing than typical flour because it is higher in fat and lower in carbs. Two tablespoons will have about two grams of fat, two grams of carbs, as well as six grams of fiber, which is pretty great. It's great for like gluten-free or lower carb baking, but it does tend to make the recipes quite dry, which is why you'll often see it's paired with something like almond flour, like a mixture of the two. I even like to use maybe like a tablespoon or two sometimes in my protein waffles or protein pancakes or other types of protein baked goods. Although you do have to be careful with it because especially it is used mostly for baked goods. And that means it's often going to be paired with other sugars. So even though it's a better option than regular flour, it still can be easy to eat well beyond the body's needs because it's going to be paired with sugar. But using it in a couple tablespoons amounts in various higher protein recipes is a great alternative to regular flour. Okay, number 10 is activated charcoal. This also can be made from a variety of different products, but it's often made from coconut shells. Now activated charcoal doesn't get absorbed by the GI tract, which means it doesn't go in 
into our blood, but it sort of acts like a sponge where it can absorb excess toxins. In fact, for centuries, it's actually been used for poison control. And even to this day, it is often used for detoxing from various poisons. Although important note, it doesn't work for all poisons. <laughs> Activated charcoal can also reduce the ability to absorb other type of even prescription medications. So although there are a lot of studied detoxification benefits of activated charcoal, if you are taking medications, it is really important to make sure that you are careful with that. Talk with your doctor on how to properly take each of these. And it's important to make sure that activated charcoal is properly used and not eaten really close to food because just like with various toxins, it can also actually absorb a lot of nutrients from food and leave the food nutrient poor that you're absorbing. But activated charcoal does have its uses. So it's something that you could ask your nutritionist or doctor or both on how you could use it or if you would even need it. Now, I use a lot of different coconut products, especially in smoothies. So if you wanna check out one of my smoothies that uses coconut milk, you can find that with this video right here. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.